All right, we are back for another live scope video. Excited. I've been making hair jigs. So if you follow me on Facebook or Instagram, you know that I make a, a lot of hair jigs now. Okay, I'm playing with them. I'm using my, my Jinko baits. I'm using the regular plastics as well, but I love just tinkering around with uh, the different color schemes and stuff like that. I can thank uh, SK Crappie Adventures. Check out his YouTube channel. He's an awesome dude. He's, uh, he's kind of helped me uh, start this whole process with hair jig, which I don't know if it was a good thing or not, SK. But uh, today what we're gonna do is we're gonna go over live scope and finding crappie. What I do and how I use live scope to find crappie. So I'm gonna be on the uh, active captain, the helm feature, crisp videos, folks. That's what we're gonna be showing here going forward. And uh, it's all about live scope. That's what's changing this sport without a doubt for the better in my opinion. And uh, if you have it, if you wanna learn about it, this is a great video that you're about to watch because we're gonna go through a lot of the ABCs of how I use live scope to find crappie. So in the meantime, I'm gonna organize these a little bit before we uh, get out there on the water. Thanks for watching Three Pound Fishing, partnered up with these fantastic companies. Man, what a great hobby. And I'll tell you, I just love doing, I'll do five of these an evening, try a different color scheme and then try it out the next day. Um, I'm not going away from what I typically use folks, but at the end of the day, this is a nice little hobby, not for sale, just doing it for fun. Good enough for me, we're gonna go fish. Who needs that? We'll organize that at home. Maybe when it's snowing, who knows? All right, so probably the number one thing that people with live scope need to realize is that position is everything. So putting your nose into the wind is my first piece of advice on anything you do with live scope. Good position on that brush pile, good position on that fish. So putting your nose in the wind is what I look for first. So I'll go all the way around a pile, even though I know it's right there, just so that I can have good position for what I'm about to do. Now live scope started here. We've got a good pile right here. We're gonna drop on them. They look like they're roughly around 14 foot and we're just gonna see what we can come up with. This is the first drop of the day. There he is. So you saw a couple fish come at it but they didn't take it. But this guy came from a distance and took it. So that's a good first active captain. <laughs> that's, a, that's a nice little eater, maybe an 11 inch fish. So we're letting them go today, but that's that's what you wanna do. Good position. Um, I only use spot lock and everybody asks me about this. I don't use spot lock on every pile that I fish. I don't. I only use it if I've got a nice steady wind. And today we have a nice steady wind. So I can sit off this pile by 10, 15 feet and I can pitch to it all day long if I chose to stay here. Here we go again. Ooh. That's a little bit better fish right there. We'll just call it an 11, but a great fish. Now, a lot of times these big fish will be alone and they'll take occup occupation on one of these brush piles or these, these stumps that are smaller. And so sometimes you'll see just one fish on it and I love grabbing that fish. So when I do a search for a pile, I'm all the way out there at 30, 50, even longer, right? So as soon as you get to that pile, in good position, you wanna start reducing that down. You can see there's a ton of fish here. This will be, and I always, most people always reduce it down to 20. I mean, it's not to say that you can't fish with it in 30 and everything else, but most people reduce it down to 20. So here we are, reduced down to 20. There's a ton of fish right there. Let's see if I can get a good drop right there. There's a good drop. And you learn, you learn really quick what, what 10 feet is and, and everything else. So it's not something that you just, automatically I mean you learn time on the water is always what it is there's one right there but well, that was a light bite that was a light bite folks I don't even think you got that on active captain another 11 incher that's a good fish pretty fish There it is. A 
Look at that. All right. Lost my line. And we still have the fish on. We do have the fish on. That, that reel was at the end of its line. How pathetic. <laughs> but look, see, I got it. <laughs> I got it anyway. I brought a couple new reels today just to fill them up. That was one of the reels that got filled up, obviously. All right, well, one of my hair jigs is working, so we're gonna put him away. Ooh. He did grab it. I didn't think he was going to, but he did. That's a good fish, folks. First 12 and a half. That's a good fish. Woo -hoo -hoo -hoo. Nice and thick. So whenever I'm looking for these brush piles or anything, just searching for fish in general, I usually have it all the way out to about 50. That's kind of my go-to searching number. 50, 30 to 50, but 50 usually, just because I need to have time to stop, especially if I'm cruising at 10. As soon as I notice those fish, though, I put that sucker in reverse and we try to creep up on it and try to get good good position. Now, if it's only one fish, maybe I don't worry too much about it, but uh, if it's a plum tree, if it's a lot of crappie, then I'm gonna definitely take my time. All right, here's a, it's still a little scattered. I guess if we reduce this down to 20, those fish are gonna get continue to get bigger. We're at 30 now. There's your 20. Those are nice fish. Ooh, those are really good fish, okay. So when it gets to 10, here's a tip, another tip. When it gets to 10 is when I pitch. I pitch, that's me reversing my boat a little bit so it falls slower. Boom, boy, did they come after that. Did you see that? Good night. All right, there's a lot of good size fish here too. That's nice. Um, I think it's all right. I think it's been taken twice since I just threw it down there and I can't even pick up on it. All right, here we go. There it is. Good fish. Another 12. Oh, baby. These guys are aggressive. And they like another one of my hair jigs. I like it. Oh my gosh, folks. You see that? That is crazy amount of fish right there. That is an ungodly amount of fish. That, that's what a day's made of right there. You could sit here and eat that up all day. Um, these are probably gonna be decent fish. There I am dropping in. I keep it right on their top. There it is right there, really quick. Oh my gosh. That's incredible right there. Again. That's a better fish right there. It is noisy, windy, crazy out here. Boom. Now that was a great school. There it is right there. That is an incredible school right there. That is stacked. That's not going anywhere for a while. Um, we're gonna leave it. We're gonna catch one more off this. Now watch this here. Let's see if we can get a really good video of this. There it is. Oh my gosh, this is another good fish. I got a guide trip in the morning. If you're interested in guide trips, check me out at 3poundfishing at gmail.com. But I got a guide trip in the morning. So this is the evening before that. And uh, we'll be coming here. <laughs> we're gonna get out of here we're gonna keep we keep exploring i mean that's the fun thing that's, that's what makes live scope so awesome i mean you can find sp stuff inside image you no doubt but it was such much more of a process now i can scan a whole shoreline just waving back and forth going 50 feet out just like i'm doing right now and uh buy a new structure it just doesn't get any better folks it really doesn't live scope rocks now I have the 8612, so if you didn't see the other video that I released 
probably the one right before this. Um, 8612 is their top of the line. It's awesome. Best picture processor that they have to offer. Um, I also like the 126 SV. Now these are touch screens. I'm not a big fan of touch screens, but I'll take it if that's what I need to do to get that quality of a picture. Um, I do like the dial of the uh, 1222s and 42 options, but uh, I, you know, you get used to doing everything on the touch screen. It's no big deal. I thought dirty hands would bother me, but it doesn't. Um, you get used to basically anything you, you have to to get the quality screen that you want, and that's that's the number one. So I should have done it. I should have done it at the very beginning. I should have just got the best that they had. I knew that's that's usually where I end up going anyway. Just like a lot of you guys out there. I know you're diehards, just like me. Now you can get these three pound elite series at ozarkrod.com. Right now I'm playing with the 10 footers, but the tw the 13 footer is what I use in tournaments usually, uh, just because I want to stay even further away from the fish. But unless I'm casting, I'll stick with the 10 footer. But most of the time it's a 13 footer in tournaments. Uh, it, but you know my 10 footer that's probably my all-time favorite i love the 10 footer people a lot of feedback good feedback uh the number one thing people notice right off the bat is how light it is a light for for a, with a rod this much backbone i don't know if you can find a lighter rod an example of a deep pile i thought maybe it would give off a little bit more but it did not it did not some fish down there though guys coming up from 20 feet that's again a small fish though hey thanks for joining i appreciate it please subscribe to three pound fishing we're going to have a great time this winter it does not get any better than winter and fall fishing on this lake. We've been fishing it a lot. What a great day. <laughs>